Hi everyone, uh, my name's Kaylin and welcome to a very special episode of the Home Space series. So today our episode is called Maker in Motion and I have with me Neve. Hi everyone. And in the background, as always, we have Amanda, Richard and Corey ready to answer any questions that you have. So please remember that you can just throw in any questions or comments that you want to make into that section there and they will respond as quickly as possible. Also, an important thing to notice for today's episode is that you can put the webinar on pause at any time. So if you need to pause and go and grab some materials or grab something in particular, please do and then you'll be able to just play and it'll continue on from where you left off. So as I said, today's episode is a little bit different and we're focusing on steam. Now, this steam isn't the type of thing that comes out of the hot water. It's something a little bit different. So S stands, stands for science, the T stands for technology, the E for engineering, the A for arts, and the M for mathematics. So when you combine all of those subjects and areas into one type of challenge or activity, you end up developing your problem solving skills, your communication skills and your ability to just work something out on the spot. So we're going to be focusing on those critical skills today in our challenge. So like I said, the session today is called Maker in Motion. OK, so if you think for a second as to what do you think that could mean? We're focusing on two different themes. We're going to focus on construction and construction is the building of something. So taking materials, putting them together to, to make something. And then we're also working with art and that creative part of our brain. That's also really important in STEAM activities. We always use our creativity. And then we think, uh, think about maker in motion. So we're doing something really exciting today. We're actually going to be creating our very own stop motion. So our very own stop motion video or film, if you want to. And we're going to be making our own characters as well by constructing them with materials you have around your house. So if you haven't heard of stop motion before, it's very easy. All it is is hundreds of little photos put together in a sequence in order and then when they're played all together it gives the illusion or it looks like the image is moving okay so you take loads of little pictures of something moving very slightly across your screen and you play it back and it'll give the illusion that it's walking across the screen we'll get more into that in a bit so first I'm going to just pass you to Neve, who's going to explain the materials that we will need for today Thanks, Kaylin. Okie doke. So today we're going to need um, some materials to get started with stop motion. So I'm going to show you where you can access this webinar on demand and where you can see the materials list in case you want to do it at a different stage. So we have to go to aka.ms forward slash DS home space. Okay. And when that opens up, if we want to watch the webinar again after today, we can go down to here to on demand home space lessons, click into the YouTube playlist and you will find today's webinar there. OK, however, if you want to find the materials list and get your materials ready before you go on to find the webinar the next time, you can come down here to our wakelet and click into wake. So view all resources here. OK, our wakelet takes a little bit of time to load, so I've already loaded it for us just to speed things up so that we get into our maker motion straight away. And we have to scroll the whole way down to the bottom of our wakelet and we will see maker motion. And if we click in here, we will see the materials list we need for to get started today. So it's at the very, very bottom of our wakelet. So we have to scroll all the way down. Okie doke. OK, however, I'm going to go through the materials we need today to get started. So don't worry if you haven't got all of these materials. That doesn't matter. You use whatever you have available to you at home so you can improvise. This is just a rough guide that myself and Kaylin drew up. 
OK, so if you want, you can pick one item from the blue section. So either an empty toilet roll, some paper or perhaps some old newspaper. However, don't worry if you've none of those items. You might have an old cereal box or you might find some cardboard lying around. They'd, you, they'd be perfect instead. OK, then we'd suggest maybe using one item from the yellow section from section two. OK, so it suggests maybe using markers or colours, googly eyes or coloured paper. But again, if you don't have them items, you might have some straws or some pipe cleaners. They'd be perfectly fine as well. And last but not least, our third section, which is our green section. And this section is really, really important because it helps us combine our, um, our item that we're trying to create for our stop motion. So we have on our list scissors, glue and tape. So you're allowed to use two of those items. But again, if you don't have those items, you might have blue tack. You could use that instead to help to help stick it all together. And one thing I would like to mention is if you are going to use the scissors and that's what you choose to use, I would suggest maybe asking a parent or guardian for some help and obviously for permission before um, you decide to use the scissors. So now what exactly is stop motion? What does it mean? Well, stop motion is an animated filmmaking technique that uses objects that move in small increments and photographs to help create the illusion of a moving image. So that's exactly what stop motion is. OK, and it's been around a really long time. So it's been around a lot longer than you or I. It's around since 1849. OK, and some of our favourite movies were created using stop motion. So films and programmes such as The Nightmare Before Christmas, Wallace and Gromit and what else? The Corpse Bride were all created using stop motion. So it's not pretty cool. That's a fun fact of the day. OK, and the examples that I just mentioned, they use different materials to create their stop motion. So some of them used clay and others used puppets. So again, we can use lots of different materials to create our stop motion. So I'm going to pass you back over to Kayla now and she is going to explain what materials she is going to use today to get started. OK, so thanks, Neve. And it's really interesting to hear about the history of stop motion as well before we get into it um, now. So we're going to be making two separate puppets today. We're going to be using paper for one and then a toil toilet roll, an empty toilet roll for another, because I feel like a lot of people have those hanging around the house at the moment. So we have one paper and one toilet roll. So first, we're just going to show you how to make the paper puppet. OK, so first thing you have to do is go and grab all of your materials that you will need. I've grabbed just some extras to have around if I need them when I get into designing my characters for today. So over here, I have some colourful pieces of paper that I'm going to be using instead of colouring in my character just because it's easier for me to draw it out on a piece of paper and cut it out and stick it on but if you are really creative you'd be able to just colour it in and draw the cool designs on the paper yourself. So I'm going to grab just a white piece of paper okay because this is going to be my base and then I'm going to add some cool features to my puppet afterwards. So I'm going to make sure that I have it lying lengthways like this and I'm going to fold it into thirds. OK, so I'm going to fold it, making sure that it's nice and neat. That's an important thing to remember. Hey, okay. actually, they don't even have to be even. So we're just folding it into three different parts there. Then I'm going to take some glue. And I'm just going to glue this shut because you'll see later that it makes it a bit easier. I'm going to put my lid back on my glue and glue that down like that. OK, so now I have my paper glued. The next part is to fold it some more. So 
I'm going to make sure that the part that I've just glued is on the outside. So I'm going to flip it over and fold it in half. Okay, fold it in half and make sure that your corners up here are nice and neat as well. Just because it'll look, it'll look a lot better then. Next step is to fold these pieces backwards. Okay, so I'm going to fold them back like that. I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. And that is the base of your puppet. Now to add some cool features. I've decided to create a dog as my puppet because I love my dog and I wanted to make a little puppet, um, puppet friend for my dog. So I took a black piece of paper and I just drew out some little spots for my dog. So I just drew out some cool little spots for my dog and I also drew out a big ear that I'm going to cut out. So I have my puppet here. I have my ear that looks like it'll that looks like one of those ears will work. Now I'm actually going to be using googly eyes because I have them. But you can just draw them on a white, white piece of paper either. Now we have to add the ear. So I want the other ear to look the same as this one. So I'm just going to trace around it. Now we've both of our ears and we can just stick them on with another little bit of glue on each side. Okay, I'm going to put one a little angle so that you can tell. Okay, so there we have our first puppet and I actually went and added in some more features as well after I made it. I added in a little nose for my, for my little dog and I added in a tongue, which you'll see later on in the stop motion. So feel free to create whatever you want. You don't need to make a dog. You can make a different animal. You could make a person as well. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can decide um, what you want to make. So let's start with our next puppet using the toilet roll. For this one, I'm actually going to be creative with it and I'm going to create a tree for the background of my stop motion. So if you wanted to create a character just using the toilet roll, that's okay, but I'm actually going to create a tree for my background using the same materials. So all I need is a piece of green paper and one toilet roll. That's all we need. So I'm gonna just draw out nice big tree. And the next thing I need to do is just cut two slits. So now I've cut two slits in my toilet roll like that. And all I have to do is just put my paper into those little slits. And there I have my tree. If you want to add some little designs to your tree you can as well. So I'm going to add some little 
red cherries. Okay, perfect. So that is our second puppet that we made today. But just like I said for the first one, you can actually use what I've the um, use the instructions that I've given you today to make something else. So you can actually, the way that I have the leaves there sitting into the toilet roll holder, you could actually have someone's hair. So if you wanted to create as um, a nice big piece of hair on the top of somebody's head, or if you wanted to add in bunny ears, you could as well. Um, and that just means that you could then draw a little face onto your toilet roll um, holder and it'll look like a person as well. Um, so we're now going to get started on our stop motion now that we have our characters made. So I'm just going to pass you on to Neve, who's going to tell us about what different options we have for today when we're making our stop motion. OK, so thanks, Caelan. We have a couple of different options when we're trying to create a stop motion, and I'm going to discuss two options we have today. OK, so we can either use our camera to take the pictures and then edit it in video editor, or we can use an app or a website, take our pictures, upload our pictures onto the app or the website, and then it will create our stop motion for us. So with the camera, we have to do all of the editing ourselves in video editor. However, with the app or the website version, we can well, it will do it for us. It will create the stop motion for us. So I think today, Caelan will be using Stop Motion Studio. So she's going to take you a little bit more in depth into how to use Stop Motion Studio. Exactly. So thanks, Neve. So today we are using Stop Motion Studio. Um, and the reason is because it is a really easy app to use and it's free and available across every platform. So it's on iOS, Android and Windows and that is the icon now on your screen so you can just download that app and it is super easy to use. So we're going to get started on our stop motion now, now that we have our characters. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to look up my stop motion studio. Perfect, and I can just click on the app and the app is going to open up for me. Now, when I first clicked into this app, it asked for permission to use my camera and my microphone. And I said yes, because they're the things that I'm going to need to make my little film with my character. So here you can see all my previous projects that I have done, but to make a new one, I can just click on this pink plus. And now I have my back camera is on. So I've actually set up a little stage behind my device today. Um, so this is the back of my camera. There you can see my little dog that I've named Spot. Um, so it's the back of my camera, but I can change that to the front facing camera if I wanted to by just clicking on this little camera button down here and switching it to the front facing camera. There's another option in here that you can turn on another setting called grid and it is actually extremely beneficial when we are creating stop motions because it helps you place your puppet in the screen and you can tell exactly where they are when they're moving across. So it makes it a lot easier for you to make your to take your next picture. There's a few other settings that we can see on the screen. There's a play button up here which will just play your stop motion and um, even if you are still in the middle of taking photos you'll be able to press play and it'll show you what it's like up until that point. We have the big red button which we can all presume is the one that takes the photos for us and we have a little clock here. So the clock is actually really beneficial if you want to be in the stop motion yourself so you'd be able to turn on that and it's a timer. So you can set the timer to take the photo after a certain amount of seconds. So you can turn that on, make sure um, you have your camera set up, go stand in front of your camera and then you're, you'll be in your own stop motion as well. And you can make it look as if you are flying or, or jumping off the ground through stop motion, which is really, really cool. There's some other settings down here. There's a first and a last button, um, which just brings you to the beginning of all of your photos and the end of all of your photos. 
Um, there is the number of photos that you can take down here. And there's a few other ones that will go through once we have filmed our stop motion. So I'm going to get um, spot ready. I'm going to make sure I have, have them sitting on my hand. OK, and now the really important thing about stop motion is that you have to be patient, which means you have to take it nice and slow and make sure that you're only moving your character in tiny, tiny little movements. So my first one is going to have a little bit of Spot's ear in it. I'm going to take a photo, move in a tiny bit more, tiny bit more. Even I'm moving too much here. And that is the real trick to doing stop motion, is moving in tiny little movement. And you'll see in a second, because I'm not doing really tiny movements, I'm actually moving them quite a bit. You'll see that my stop motion mightn't look as smooth as some of the other ones you know, like Wallace and Gromit or The Nightmare Before Christmas. Or Sean the Sheep, which is one I saw there in the Q&A. OK. Nearly done. Nearly off the screen. Just the ear to get off now. And then we'll be able to play back and see what this actually looks like. OK, right, so we took 26 photos there, OK? We took 26 photos and all we wanted was to get Spot to move across the screen. So let's press play and see how this goes. OK. It looks OK, actually. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit happy with that. We might be going a little bit too fast. OK, so let's pause it for a second and click on settings. So when you click on settings, you're able to change the speed of the photos. So if you were doing this in a normal video editor, you'd have to click on every photo and change the amount of seconds. But here you're able to do it so quickly and you're able to just drag, drag this little guy up and down to change how fast it is. So if I did up here, it'd be super fast and you'd barely be able to see spot. So I'm going to just move it down a little bit. And that's saying two frames per second. So that'll be, I think it'll be good enough. I'm going to try that one there. I'm going to go to my first photo and then I'm going to press play. Okay, I am okay with that. It's a little bit jumpy, but I could have made it so much better by just taking my time a little bit more and taking more photos. But once you are happy with it, you should save it. So if I click back over here at the left hand side, we can see that I have all of my projects here and one has been added up here that wasn't there before. And that's the one that I've just recorded. So if I click into that, it tells me the date it was created, the time that it was created, how long it is, and the amount of pictures that it took. So I could click play here and it'll open up and start playing for you. You could also click this little pencil, which gets you to edit it again. It enables you to go in and edit if you wanted to change it. Or there's a save icon here. So if I click on that save icon, it tells me that I'm exporting the file. So that means that I'm taking it from the app and I'm saving it somewhere on my computer. So I can change I can change the quality if I wanted it to be really high quality and I do because I want Spot to be really high quality and then you can hit save. And then that'll be able to you'll be able to see it on your desktop um, or wherever you send it, wherever you save it, and you can share it with people and um, with family. You could send it to them um, on email so that they can see what you have been creating. But obviously, that story there, it wasn't really a story, was it? We only had Spot moving from one side of the screen to another. So I did make one earlier on that's maybe just a little bit more interesting. And we have the tree here as well. 
Um, it's still not that creative and I can't wait to hear about what you guys do at home, but we'll have a look at what I did with Spot and my tree. So I'd spot coming in and going for a jump in the air and opening up their mouth and then noticing us and coming up to us and licking the camera like my dog does at home. OK, um, so that is the story of Spot. And as I said, it's not that creative and it's quite short, but it did take me almost 70 photos to get that. So you need to really, really be patient with the amount of photos that you're taking to make sure that you are only moving in small little bits um, and you're not moving in big bits. So I can't wait to see what you guys create at home. I'm gonna pass you on to Neve, who's gonna quickly go over what we learned today. Thanks, Kaylin. Okay, well, well done everyone and thanks for following in on the webinar today. You mightn't have had time to make your stop motion yet, but you'll get creative after this and you'll get making your own stop motion. Okay, so I'm just going to run through um, quickly what we covered today. Okay, so the first thing we learned about was we learned about steam and we learned that the steam we were talking about today wasn't actually the steam that comes out of a kettle after a kettle boils. We were talking about the steam, which is an acronym, which stands for, the S stands for science, the T stands for technology, the E stands for engineering, the A stands for arts, and the final one, which is the M, stands for mathematics. OK, we also learned all about the history of stop motion. So we learned that stop motion dates back to 1849, so a long, long time ago. And we learned about the different types of stop motions that we can create. For example, we can use our camera or we could use an app or a website. OK, we also learned how to make our own puppet from recyclable materials. And as I said, if you don't have everything on the list, you can improvise and use the recyclable materials you have available at home because there's no need in going and buying anything for this stop motion. OK, and the last but not least thing we learned was how to record a stop motion picture. And I think you will agree that I really enjoyed spot um, spots stop motion there it was really cool so well done kale and thanks for that but obviously you'll get creative and create your own version so you can create yours about whatever you would like okay so now this week's home challenge well this week's home challenge is super cool it's going to give you the opportunity to create your own characters to star in your very own stop motion so you'll have lots more time to create your stop motion now and then because you've been a filmmaker, so you're after creating your own stop motion, you should show it to people. So your family and friends and let them see how cool your stop motion is. OK, so well done. Now I'm going to have a look at the question and answer section and see did anything press and come up in the question and answers. OK, I have one question here and I'm going to aim it at Kaylin. Kaylin, um, can we use another stop motion app or do we have to use stop motion studio to create our stop motion? That's a really good question, Neve. And actually, you can use whatever app you have available. There's a few websites as well that you can use. We just wanted to use one that we thought was easy and good, um, but feel free to use whatever you have available. If you just want to take the photos and edit them together, you can do that. So use whatever you have at home and whatever you're used to. Exactly. And the cool thing about stop motion, Kaylin, is that it's free, isn't it? So that's super cool as well. Exactly. Um, I have seen another question here. Can we include audio in our stop motion? OK, so you can include audio and um, you can include a voiceover. So if I wanted to tell the story off spot, I could add that in as a voiceover and you'll see that it is one of the options in the left hand corner of the app. When you open it up, you should see a little option there to add a voiceover and that's how you could do that. Excellent. And I'm going to pick one more question. I'm sorry I won't get to everyone's question today, but it's great to see people joining in that have been in DreamSpace before and have joined us in on some of the other webinars. OK, so the last question I'm going to choose is this question here, Kaylin. Um, does it have to be pictures used in our stop motion or could we create a stop motion using video? OK, so 
With stop motion, you have to use pictures because it's called stop motion because you have to stop, move the item and then take your photo. So you need to do it in pictures and it'll create that really nice effect that we're so familiar with, with all of our favorite stop motion movies. And Neve, actually, I see one more question. I know we, have, we don't really have a lot of time, but I see a question here that's asking, is there a limit to the amount of puppets that we can make? And of course there's not. If you can think of 20 different puppets and even get your family at home to join in with your stop motion, please do, because that will make your end stop motion really, really cool. So if I had time to create 10 trees or three different dogs for friends for a spot, I would have loved to, but we just didn't have time. So please do that as well. Great. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to quickly go over is our new um, schedule for Dream Space Home Space starting next Monday on the 20th of April. We have a lot of new things coming and I'm just going to quickly go through every day. So Monday is going to stay the same, Monday at 1 p.m. with Coding with Microbit and we're going to be delving into some cool new things with that over the next few weeks. We're then going to, on Tuesdays, we're introducing a new series called Programming with Python um, and that will be on at Tuesdays at 1 p.m. as well. On Wednesdays, we're going to be continuing with Arcade and making a new game starting next week, which is very exciting as well at 1 p.m. On Thursdays at 1 p.m., we're going to be introducing a new series called Full Steam Ahead. So in those sessions, you're going to be doing similar challenges as today, except you won't have to use any technology. It will just be using materials that you can find around your house. And the very exciting thing about those sessions is we're going to have some really cool guest speakers on with us as well, who will give us some tips about our challenges or tell us a little bit about some projects that they're doing. So we're very excited about that one. And then on Fridays at 1 p.m., we'll be introducing the Imagine Cup Junior um, and it'll be based on AI for Good. So the AI for Good challenge. So if you want to, um, get any more information on any of them please go to aka.ms forward slash ds home space um, and you'll see all of the information that you need for those series starting next week so we're very excited to be starting with all of those different webinars next week okay so Thank you so much for joining in today. I cannot wait to hear what you created with your puppets, if you made animals or people. It's all very exciting. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing you next week with our whole new schedule. So if you want to find those materials, do make sure to log on to aka.ms forward slash homespace files and you'll see them up there. So thanks again for joining today. Thanks everyone.